Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom Ambry. I'm on, uh, I'm on the board of FEI, the Long Island chapter. I'd like to welcome all of you today to uh, a very exciting uh, topic, uh, 2022 hiring and compensation trends. Uh, we um, just, just be, before we get into the, the, the details here, uh, this is CPE eligible. Uh, so please be sure to answer uh, the polling questions that uh, will be popping up during uh, during the uh, during the program, and also the Q and A function uh, at the bottom of your screen to actually uh, ask any questions that you have. Uh, you know, there's a lot of content here today, so uh, our presenters have asked that uh, you use that function. Uh, and we may be addressing it later in the presentation. I'll, uh, I'll be monitoring the, the Q&A as well. But anything that we don't address today, they'll be sure to uh, follow up with uh, subsequently. So, so I, I actually have the pleasure, and, and it really is a pleasure because I've known both of our presenters now for, for some time. They're, they're wonderful people and wonderful partners uh, to, uh, to me and, and, and my company. Uh, so. I'm with Estee Lauder uh, companies, and um, uh, Paula and Lorraine are, are going to be taking us through today's uh, presentation. Uh, starting with Paula, Paula is VP and Practice Director of Robert Half's Management uh, Resources Group, Practices Group, uh, and that, that's really the resource-based arm of, uh, of, 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 of Robert Half. Uh, she's overseen uh, this practice area on Long Island since, since 2013, uh, and she's been uh, with Robert Half for some time uh, before that, working as a consultant with a number of high-profile uh, clients um, in, in the Long Island area. Uh, Lorraine, her, her, her partner in crime today, is uh, <laughs> VP and Senior Talent Manager for Robert Half, uh, focused in on finance and accounting. Uh, full-time services uh, team. Uh, so she's, she's led this team for uh, almost 10 years and we're very excited to, uh, to welcome both of them today. So uh, welcome and I'll, I'll turn it over to, uh, uh, to, to the two of them. Tom, thank you so much. Uh, it's great to see you again. And Lorraine and I are very happy to be with you all today, albeit virtually to review the hiring and compensation trends as uh, per our annual survey of hiring managers and candidates across the country. Of course, we look forward to seeing you in person and we hope that day comes uh, sooner rather than later. It's been uh, far too long. So with that, we will get started. So um, Robert Half has been tracking salaries since 1950 and publishing salary forecasts first, as you can imagine, on paper, and that went on for some time. Um, but now we flash forward 70 years later and we have a new way to deliver the salary guide with uh, this wonderful information we'll be highlighting for you today. It's completely online, completely interactive. Um, it combines all of the dis disciplines for which we serve, which are those across the corporate GNA spectrum. So not only finance and accounting, but human resources, technology, legal, et cetera. So it's a great guide, very easy to click through. And what we're bringing you today will be some highlights uh, from the, the guide itself. Um, also worth noting and something that we'll cover a little later in the presentation is that it includes a new section that spot spotlights diversity, equity, and inclusion and why DEI is good for business. So we look forward to covering that with you. So um, first uh, we will start with a look at the trends on a national level. But before we go there, we're going to tee up our first poll question. So I'll read this and give you a moment to think about it. Um, so the first question is, do you take the time to familiarize yourself with the unemployment data released each month by the US Bureau of Labor Statistics? 
your first response could be A, yes, I like to check the current employment, unemployment rate. B, sometimes I get the information from news sources. C, sometimes, but I need to get better at proactively checking. And D, no, I don't check it. All right, so I think Sarah is going to pull up the polling question. There you go. So please take a few seconds to mark your response. And we will um, then take a look at where the, where the general consensus comes out. Okay, and that was a quick response. So um, it looks like we have a well-informed group here. Uh, about 80% of you either check the first or the second answer so that you are checking uh, for the current unemployment rate or you get your information from news sources. So um, that's, that's a great sign. And I think as a result, a lot of the information that we're covering today is something that will be consistent with what you've been hearing. So uh, let us, let us go. All right, just have to get myself advanced. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is like our challenge today. All right, so as I said, we're gonna look at national trends. So the first trend is, and this will be, like I said, probably consistent with what you are hearing, and this is great news, hiring markets are heating up. So after a very long, hard year last year, where, where a lot of businesses went on pause or you know, even had more challenges than just going on pause, we're seeing hiring starting to pick up again. And Lorraine and I, you know, in talking to our permanent placement colleagues, have heard this again and again. They are just very, very busy right now. So it's a great sign for our clients and their businesses and our candidates. Um, so, you know, despite the fact that we're still in a pandemic and there's a concern about vaccination rates, confidence is getting higher and higher in business. And what's really interesting to see or hear is that hiring is near or even in some cases, in some markets, exceeding pre-pandemic levels. And um, like I said, that's a great sign. So in our survey of senior managers in the United States, 51% of those answering responded that their companies are expanding hiring of full-time employees. Okay, so the second trend that we noted in our survey is that workers are firmly in control. And you know the fact is that we're finding our candidates are getting multiple offers. They're coming off the market quickly if they're between jobs. And so employers are having to respond to the current landscape in the marketplace. So I'm going to cover what employers are giving to attract talent. And then we'll talk about what the workers are thinking. So employers are giving. So job title up upgrades, they're really looking at, you know, where their jobs should be in terms of attracting talent for people who are looking to make that next move. 40% of companies are doing that. 43% are giving more paid time off, so more vacation time. 46% are giving cash incentives. And 48% are giving signing bonuses, again, to attract that talent and to have candidates choose their company as opposed to the offer from another company. Um, very interesting to see what the, what the employees are thinking or the workers are thinking. 31% might quit their jobs. You know, we've been hearing the great resignation. And while it may not necessarily relate to the finance and accounting field, you know, people are really rethinking where their careers are and where they want to be. 46% of employees at current companies are asking for a raise. Nearly 50% feel underpaid, so that follows. This is stunning. 66% say a new job is easy to find. So that is really um, a stunning uh, statistic. And then nearly 90% 90, 90 of the workers think their current skills are uh, adequate or proficient enough to find their next job easily. So very interesting thoughts on both sides of the house and um, 
obviously employers are starting to respond to what's happening in the market. Okay, I'm now going to turn uh, this next slide over to Lorraine to present. Thank you, Paula. Hi, everybody. It's great to be here. Uh, our third trend we're going to talk about is the impact of remote work. So uh, the pandemic definitely caused a uh, huge change in the way people work, uh, basically from uh, the disruption that it made in the uh, in all companies, like Paula mentioned earlier. Uh, there are companies that were essential and non-essential uh, that really had to go remote in order to keep operations going to whatever uh, place they needed to be. So uh, we did a survey actually, and 75% of companies, um, basically 75% of employees realize that they love remote work. I mean, personally, I enjoy it. Uh, you know, there are aspects that are great. Some people don't like it at all. It's it's across the board, it's different. But this, the survey we did said 75% of employees want to work uh, in some way remotely. Um, so, whoops, see now my turn, Paul. So, okay. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, the good news for employers is that there are benefits to the remote work. Uh, one of the benefits for employers is that it definitely promotes better morale. Um, employees like it for those 75%, they like it. Uh, they're going to be happier employees. They don't have to commute. Uh, they uh, you know, get to take care of some uh, life work. Uh, I'm sorry, get a better balance of life and work. And you know, when happy, you have happy employees, you have better performance typically. So uh, that is definitely a benefit. Another benefit to employers is it gives you an edge in hiring and retention. So if you're offering any type of remote option, whether it's hybrid or fully remote, you're more likely to attract employees uh, to work for you uh, because they like that option, clearly. And then of course in retention, uh, if you wanna keep employees and they enjoy working remotely uh, and you're offering that, you're going to keep those employees on board. You have a much better chance. The last uh, benefit I thought was interesting is that it offers a deeper candidate pool. And not only because you're offering a remote option, but because you can have a uh, stretch your uh, reach out now to other geographic areas. Uh, so that definitely gives you a bigger candidate pool for you to work with. Uh, we actually did a survey of seven of uh, managers and 78% of them said that they plan to reach out to a bigger geographic area to get the skills that they really want. So a little question for you. This is just a trivia question. Um, how many days a week would you would employees like to work remotely? So we surveyed those 75% who want to work remotely. About how many days per week do you think they would like to work from home versus in the office? Um, so just throwing that out there. Um, and I don't know if you throw it in the yeah, chat we might or, not be able to see yeah, that. yeah but that's fine <laughs> so i'm just going to tell you what the common number is three days per week remote so not three days in the office they want to work three days remotely that was the uh basically the common theme there so keep that in mind as you're uh bringing on more employees so um the next slide i'm going to talk about the fourth trend which is our the flexible labor model and we talk about the flexible labor model. Um, we go back to, again, the pandemic and business slowing down and laying off workers and cutting schedules and employees leaving because they're not able to, they don't want to work in an office. Uh, they have medical reasons why they can't work or go out. Uh, so staff was tight. So now we're at a point where companies are starting to come back, which is great. It's the, it's the Terrific. And now that that's happening, you need to bring your employees back. It's still employees. Some employees don't want to come back. Some employees maybe found a different job, uh, whatever the, you know, that case may be. So what we did was we did a survey and we found that 38% of companies have increased the use of contract talent because they're unable to find the full-time talent uh, to bring them up to speed really quick. So, because that's what companies need to move on. Uh, and that's, that's good. And, and, uh, you know, the, you could use the talent, the contract talent while you're looking for, uh, other employees or just to maintain that stopgap as we like to call it. Uh, 
a very interesting fact right now is that 45% of companies say that contractors are the majority of their staff. So that means that almost half of uh, these companies that were surveyed are using contractors uh, as a big port portion of their staff. So keeping that in mind, I uh, think that's changing now. Now that we're starting to come into some normalcy, uh, now companies are hiring more on the permanent uh, basis, as Paula said earlier, with our colleagues, they're extremely busy and bringing on uh, permanent folks. So definitely something for us to keep an eye on and see how, how that goes. All right, so that brings us to our second polling question. So for this one, you'll be able to participate. Uh, which option best describes hiring plans for your company? A, expanding, adding new positions. B, maintaining your current staffing levels and only hiring for vacated roles. C, freezing, not filling vacated jobs or creating new positions. Or D, reducing and eliminating positions. So Sarah, great. She's got it up there. So take a look at that and take a minute to a uh, couple seconds to <laughs> answer that question. All right, our results. There we go. Wow. Okay. I kind of thought this is where this would fall. Maintaining current staffing levels and only hiring for vacated positions. 60% of you said that's where you're at. And that it definitely makes sense uh, with the pandemic and coming back to some normalcy. I think that was what I was thinking it would where it would fall. Uh, and then as far as expanding, it looks like some companies are expanding, which is terrific. Uh, unfortunately, some are freezing and not filling. Um, Oh, vacated positions. Uh, it's interesting. I wonder where that falls in terms of whether people are bringing in contract help or not filling them at all. Um, but it's nice to see that most people are not reducing or eliminating positions. So that's great. Yeah, very good. All right. Thank you so much. All right. So I'm going to pass this over to Paula for the next trend. Okay. So in general terms, the, the last trend on a national basis, if you will, is that businesses are seeking help with hiring. So even though most of you are maintaining, it does lend itself to some of the conversations that Lorraine and I get into with our clients across Long Island, which is that companies are doing more with less resources. So, and that was probably true pre-pandemic, but it's especially true now. And a lot of times we find that the reason that they're doing more with less resources is that some event has occurred. So, and it seems to boil down into three categories. One is transitioning op operations into an improved state. So maybe there's some transaction backlog that needs to be addressed and cleaned up and processes that need to be optimized. Or maybe it's a scalability issue as it relates to increased growth, um, perhaps coming back from the pandemic, perhaps just because the company is in uh, that state of evolution. Another set of events falls into the transformation of operations to align with strategic growth. And more often than not, that falls in the direction of upgrading the ERP um, platform. Mm -hmm which you know, then would really strain a finance and accounting team, some of whom might get tapped to go on to a project like that. Um, and another thing that may also fall into this bucket as an event would be cost cutting initiatives and maybe you know, looking at how spending is allocated and maybe directing it more towards revenue generation um, activities. And lastly, the third set of events falls under transaction, maybe a merger or acquisition, maybe a divestiture of a company um, or a sub uh, business unit, excuse me. So all of these things tend to be in the theme of the conversation we get into as to why the finance and accounting teams are feeling a little stretched these days. So we have found ourselves partnering more and more with our um, clients here on Long Island to help with, um, with resources. So um, that was the final trend that we noted um, that, and that we wanted to highlight here. 
uh, on a national level. And now we're going to drill a little deeper into the trends on the finance and accounting side. And this we know is near and dear to most of your hearts. So the first is along the lines of digital transformation and the efforts of a company to accelerate that. And we uh, surveyed CFOs to get their take on this. And obviously this has been something that we've been talking about for the past few decades, but now it's, it's really on a fast track and largely due to what has happened um, to us in the world over the last year and a half. So um, we found in our survey that over half of the CFOs are prioritizing digital transformation initiatives. The um, good news related to this is that these same CFOs are also prioritizing um, development of their staff so that they can keep up with the advancements in technology. So 72% are increasing their professional development budgets. Another trend that we're seeing is that there are more opportunities for entry level workers. So in this job market, which is heating up, um, especially for finance and accounting candidates, there are opportunities for recent grads and other entry level workers that are increasing. And it seems that employers are putting some emphasis on bringing in folks early in their careers and developing them to become future leaders, which is, which is great. So the key thing here is too, by bringing in um, recent entry level candidates, if you will, they bring a fresh perspective and very well honed technology skills. So they're, you know, they've got great skills with Excel and um, other technologies. So this, um, this helps benefit all the folks on the team. And I think Lorraine, you were telling me recently about some insight you got in talking to two, two of your consultants. So let me turn it over to you to highlight that. Sure. Uh, so yeah, recently we had uh, two a client project and we had two consultants uh, going on the job. One of them was a junior accountant. One of them was a senior accountant. The senior accountant had a tremendous amount of experience and knowledge um, to offer to the junior as always, right? We expect that the juniors will gain knowledge from those seniors. But what was interesting was how, when I talked to them about how things were going, the senior accountant told me how amazing the junior was with his technical, like Paula mentioned, Excel skills and technology skills, and how he was showing him tips and tricks on how to make things work faster um, and improve uh, those um, his skills there. He was really impressed. And so I think a lot of times the senior level people, you know, they get so entrenched in what they're working with um, to, to spend time to gain those new skills a little tougher. So it's a great way when they work together and they yeah. do that reverse mentoring. And that certainly is highlighted in the answer to uh, a question on reverse mentoring. So 71% of the senior managers that we uh, surveyed do have reverse mentoring programs. So something to keep in mind when you think about you know, cross-training, um, but also thinking about the matchup of the junior and senior um, participants on your team or members of your team. Um, okay, so clearly the trend here is adapting for, a third trend is adapting for re remote work and that's no surprise at all. And you know, Lorraine and I um, have, and, and a lot of our colleagues have been talking about our experience at Robert Half over the last year and a half. And you know, just going back to March 13th of 2020, we worked in an office. We were a company that worked in an office, and we, you know, that was our culture. Uh, we had just started to establish a program where we could work from home one day a month. Um, and on March 16th, 2020, we had seamlessly transformed from being a company that worked in the office to a company that worked from home because we had to. And it was amazing what our um, IT team uh, did to help us to be able to be successful uh, as easily from home as we are in the office. And of course, there were a few bumps in that first month, but um, you know, we got through and they, 
really, it, it's been amazing. So we're very, very proud of that team. And, you know, to boot, they were also able to provide last year over 11,000 laptops to our contractors in the field to keep them productive for our clients. So, um, so the critical factors for remote work, um, just to sum that all up, would be cloud services, giving your employees the right resources, and probably most importantly, trusting your employees to do the same level of work that they did in the office at home. So um, that's, that's a very uh, key point in terms of having this be successful. And let's face it, this, uh, the work on a remote basis is here to stay permanently. It may not be 100% of the time, but we're likely going to see most companies go into a hybrid model. We know that Robert Half has made that decision. So um, although I will note that Lorraine and I are in the office today. <laughs> so, all right. Another trend that we're seeing on the finance and accounting front is there's a new hiring landscape in public accounting. And when I think back to my days in uh, public accounting way, way back when, there used to be a very defined busy season, right? It went from like January to May, if I recall correctly. And then, you know, it kind of took it easy. Now it's just these professionals are busy throughout the year. And, you know, we see that also on the tax side of the house. Um, we used to work with clients at a very definitive time in the year. Now that seems to be extending into other times. So both public accounting firms um, and tax, you know, smaller CPA firms that focus only on tax, all of them are planning ahead and that's important to do. Um, and, you know, the fact is that with um, entry level staffing in the public accounting firms, that is happening earlier and earlier. And likely when the can, uh, when these folks are still in college and Lorraine, you were telling me a story recently. So please share that with the group. Yeah. yeah so recently I have actually two examples of, so with the ta with tax professionals, audit professionals and in, in public accounting in demand, uh, like Paul said, they're reaching out to these students in college as they have, but now even earlier, uh, one of the uh, a gentlemen I met recently, his daughter uh, is now currently going for her master's uh, in accounting, but she was approached, of course, you know, during her senior year in um, college and uh, the company offered her at that time a salary to start when she graduates with her master's. Uh, also, she's working on the CPA exam and she's now failed the first part of the CPA exam, unfortunately. So she's going back and take it again. It's, it's not easy, so we get it. But now uh, the company actually, since her junior year, her senior year, has now offered her three raises already. So she already has gone up three notches to her starting salary when she finishes her master's. Another uh, student I know, he's also going for his master's now. He was approached in his junior year uh, and the CPA firm offered him as well a, a salary, which has also been increased for when he graduates with his uh, master's and takes the CPA exam. Both of which right now, the current salary standing at around 71,000 plus bonus for brand new, fresh out of college. So this is definitely changing. <laughs> yeah. And I will say this, you know, wrapping up this, uh, this area, this is good news for all of you folks out there whose children are following in your footsteps. <laughs> so, okay, quickly touching on another trend that we're seeing overall in finance, um, and that would relate to compliance and banking. Um, so, you know, here on Long Island, um, this is not one of our, you know, top industries, if you will, but we are seeing a growing presence um, in this area. So I thought I'd just touch on the fact that, you know, based on regulatory changes and the complexity, it's driving demand for compliance professionals um, that tends to fall into the following um, job titles, if you will, cloud security analysts, risk management analysts and control officers. And also due to a hot housing market, mortgage and banking operational professionals are in high demand as well. Okay. 
So, and I will turn it, I, will I won't take that away from you, Lorraine, I will turn it over to you to talk okay. about some of the hot industries. Sure. So based on Robert Half's firsthand knowledge of industries and trends, uh, we uh, are familiar with what's happening nationally and locally, thank you, uh, for hot industries in finance accounting and accounting. So I'm talking specifically about finance and accounting now. So likely the people on this uh, meeting will agree that the hot uh, industries nationally are financial services, government, of course, healthcare with everything going on and insurance and technology, right? So those are very big. Uh, the technology piece, just as Paula mentioned that Robert Half, these guys were working day and night trying to keep everything running smoothly for us and our contractors. Healthcare, obviously, with COVID-19 and insurance, very big. So, but locally on Long Island, uh, this is what we've seen. We've seen a, a huge, tremendous, uh, very hot spot in healthcare. Uh, of course, manufacturing, which we're excited about because that means we're doing more manufacturing on Long Island and that's opening up. You know, for a long time, manufacturing was very quiet. This is a great, um, great news for us. Uh, and nonprofit, very big on Long Island. Uh, we're very proud of our Long Island nonprofits and to see the growth in those areas coming out of the pandemic is is amazing. And then of course in the education area, uh, it's a very hot industry as well with all the changes that are happening. So it's been very interesting. Uh, after talking about hot industries, I'm gonna talk a little bit about hot jobs in finance and accounting. So you look at this list on the screen that's not in any particular order in terms of demand, uh, it's in alphabetical order, <laughs> but uh, these are the hottest jobs we're seeing right now in finance and accounting. Uh, personally, I'm seeing definitely on the accounts payable, receivable, and bookkeeper and payroll side. The payroll from entry level through senior level have been tremendously, uh, you know, in demand, uh, very hot jobs. And um, that's what I'm seeing. And I think, Paula, you're seeing uh, some demands on the higher level as well. Absolutely. Typically, uh, or, or specifically, I should say, in the controller and senior accountant space. Yeah. Right. So I'm sure you're all uh, seeing this as well. It's curious to, you know, to know uh, what you are seeing, but um, we'd love to talk about that at some point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. All right. I'd like to talk a little bit about the skills and attributes that are in demand. Okay. Um, Currently, uh, based on this remote working environment, cloud-based systems are, of course, high in demand. Systems like NetSuite and Sage Intact, QuickBooks Online, those systems are very much in demand so that companies can work smoothly in the cloud or you know, web-based. Uh, and then, of course, uh, along with that, we talked a little bit about skills within certifications, uh, like the, for public accounting, these public accounting firms need CPAs, right? They need that certification. On the payroll side, companies would love to see people with their CPP or their FPC certifications. And on HR, which Paula will touch on a little bit, the companies would love to see people with that SHRM SHRM certification. Uh, very big right now in, in terms of those people being in demand. Uh, in addition to those skills, of course, the Excel, the advanced Excel data analysis with the trends, the way they're going are very, very uh, in demand. Uh, but, you know, having great skills uh, is great, but soft skills uh, make a well-rounded employee, right? It's great to have that really bright person, but to ha and with great skills, but if they don't have great communication or they're not collaborating properly, or they aren't, don't adapt to change well, you know, that they may not be the best uh, employee. So these soft skills are things you want to look for as well. Um, you know, when you're interviewing with your current staff, you want to make sure you're focused in on these things. Uh, I'd say communication, especially in this, this trend of remote work is, is very highly regarded. All right. So, this brings me to the salary table from our salary guide. Uh, you'll see here that uh, we have, these are based, um, when you see our salary guide, it's based on starting salaries. 
Uh, and we have, in order to, because there's a big variant, variance there, we have separate percentiles. So percentiles are based on the experience, uh, knowledge, um, industry certifications that uh, individuals have. So if a candidate has little or no experience entry level in our salary guide, they would fall within our 25th percentile salary. Um, when they have some experience, some exposure, uh, uh, maybe they're mid, a midpoint average, those people would fall in our 50th percentile. And then of course you have our, the above average certified, uh, you know, people with certifications, uh, people who've been in an industry for a while, uh, strong skills in systems. Then those are those people that are in high demand and are, again, those are the people a lot, a lot of companies are looking for in our 75th percentile. So that being said, uh, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the different salaries that um, we've just chose these two uh, salaries for as an example, the divisional controller and senior financial analyst. Uh, if you look at the senior financial analyst, you may see that salary seems a little low, and that would be correct because this, our salary guide is based on a national average. Uh, so you would see that where if you look at Long Island, you need to um, add a variance to that of an increase of 25%. For Long Island and for New York City, you need to add 40 and a half percent. So when you do use our salary guides, you have the option to see all the different areas around the country and what those variances are. So, um, and then I'll trend, send this over to Paula for our next trend. Okay, so we included uh, some uh, highlights um, in the human resources area, since we know that a number of you actually also are responsible for the HR teams in your companies. So I will touch upon the trends here. Um, so no surprise, again, this is very pandemic driven as well. HR workloads and hiring are up, um, but a lot of it last year related to everything related to compliance with state laws that were coming out, state mandates with, you know, getting people who had to come back to the office, back to the office safely. So the, work the workload last year for HR teams just skyrocketed. And, um, you know, obviously will continue on as more and more employees return to an office in a hybrid fashion over the coming year. Um, so similar to what is happening in finance and accounting, 53% of companies are offering signing bonuses for new HR employees. Um, clearly hybrid work calls for human resources support, as I just mentioned. Um, so basically policies and procedures needed to be updated, changed, added, all as a result of the pandemic and largely related to um, health and safety requirements. But the fact is that the majority of employees, you know, and this would be true in HR as well as elsewhere in the company are working remotely at least some of the time. And that does create a different dynamic in terms of providing HR support. Okay, um, so, Today's HR professional does more than just finding people to come work for the company, right? So they, they, they run the gamut. So everywhere from understanding, you know, tax implications, um, payroll implications, succession planning, risk mitigation, coaching and development, on and on, there's a lot that an HR professional needs to take on. And it's no surprise that 41% of HR employees feel more burned out than they did a year ago. Um, and because they've had to take on so much, they're finding, you know, many companies are finding that the easiest thing for them to do to help their HR team address everything they need to address is to outsource the recruiting function. And 44% of the companies do that. So um, just to highlight some of the um, hot jobs in the human resources uh, field, HR assistant, HR benefits specialist, the generalist role, um, the management level as well. We're working with uh, clients here on Long Island on some higher level uh, human resources roles, you know, since many companies are trying to bulk that function up and that would be on the smaller side. Um, and then of course the, the recruiting function, which I talked about. 
Okay, so this brings us to our third polling question. What is the biggest challenge you're facing now in your workforce? Is it A, the inability to acquire talent quickly? B, keeping employees motivated and engaged? C, performance lost due to skills gap? D, lack of leadership or strong management? And E, non-competitive compensation and benefits? Lorraine and I actually had a visit today with someone who was mentioning that. I'm sure you'd like to choose more than one on this list, but please choose what represents your biggest challenge. And the polling question is up. Give it a few more seconds. coming <laughs> okay the this is this is probably not a surprise to Lane or I the inability to acquire talent quickly that's nearly 50 percent of you responded that way um, and that is definitely um, a recurring theme we are hearing and experiencing um, across the board here on Long Island with our clients um, so and even even in our world you know it's been a challenge um, to find uh, qualified candidates, it is just, you know, and this is something we do every day. So, you know, we completely understand. Uh, the next on the list, by the way, was keeping employees motivated and engaged. So um, at any rate, that is where we landed on this polling question. And Lorraine, I will turn it to you to touch briefly on the trends and benefits and perks. Thank you. So yeah, interestingly, I'm glad to see that it's not the benefits uh, that, that, that your companies aren't offering competitive benefits. And that's a great thing um, because we're finding the trends in benefits and perks. Uh, basically, it can be just as important as salary nowadays uh, to have uh, these pen benefits and perks to retain talent and of course, bring new people on board. Uh, we did some surveys and this screen you're looking at right now, you'll see on the left side, these are benefits that your workers are looking for. And on the right side, the benefits that most are uh, offered by employees, employers, sorry. <laughs> so uh, this, you'll see some disconnect here with 76% uh, of health, uh, companies offering health insurance. Uh, I mean, 76 employees wanting health insurance and only 64% offering, uh, which to me seemed like a really low number. 57% uh, of workers want paid time off and only 50% are offering uh, a good t time off package. 51% uh, of retirement want retirement savings plans and 46% are offering that. That's a little closer. And then our interesting fact here is that uh, employees are looking for dental insurance, uh, whereas employers, it's not in those top four uh, benefits that are being offered. However, it is nice that they are offering these life and AD and D options to their employees because those are just as important. Um, so perks regarding uh, the perks that workers are looking for, it's I'm sure you're not surprised here that they're looking for flexible work schedules, uh, and remote work options, employee discounts, and paid parental leave. There is definitely a disconnect here and with regard to these. Uh, so we definitely see that we need to be looking at this a little closer employers and um, in order to make employees happy. That being said, one of the uh, bigger uh, perks and that companies are offering, 88% uh, of HR managers said that their company has added new perks as a result of the pandemic. And I know we've seen that at Robert Half um, and actually, ironically, you'll see this coming up as well, but I don't know if it necessarily we didn't have these benefits and perks before or if I didn't know about them and that the pandemic really brought them to the forefront. So some of those are listed here, wellness programs, mental health resources, reimbursements for office equipment, paid additional paid family leave and child care assistance. Um, with regard to the wellness benefits, I'm not going to get into this too much, but there are a lot of different types of wellness. There's physical wellness like gym memberships. Uh, and um, there's mental wellness, stress reduction type programs, and financial wellness webinars and, and whatnot on your financial, your retirement planning and things like that. And here you'll see 
that a lot of companies are offering these, but a lot of employees are not using them. And like I said, I didn't know even know some of these things my company was offering. Uh, the biggest one here, well, that's not the biggest difference, but one of the bigger ones is the gym memberships, which I find, I think most companies offer if they offer health insurance, there's some kind of a reimbursement there. So if it's something you're not aware of, take a look at it. All right. And let's see, where am I? Okay. Now talk a little bit. We talked a little bit about the perks pre-pandemic and currently, but post-pandemic, uh, they are, um, basically employers are looking to offer a little more, which I think is great. Uh, employees are looking for flex time uh, still. Uh, they're still working, looking for remote options and a compressed work week. And some are looking for a per permanent part-time arrangements. And now post-pandemic, many employers are considering offering remote work options. Look at that, 76% are actually considering offering that, which is great news. 66% uh, are offering flex time, 65% uh, a compressed work week, and 59% and even more are looking to bring on part-time arrangements. So I thought that was a very interesting, uh, interesting variance. Uh, and it's really nice to see as we come back to normal, what the, and I hate to use the new normal, but the new normal will be now with these flex time and remote options. I'm going to bring it over to uh, Paula to talk about DEI. Okay. Thank you, Lorraine. Okay, so I just wanted to start this discussion with uh, a statistic. So research shows that diverse and inclusive teams are better at problem solving, decision making, and innovation. And here's this statistic that is um, very eye-catching. 71% of workers who we surveyed said that they would leave a company whose values did not align with their own. So it is, it, DEI goes beyond just doing the right thing, right? This is good for business. So I want to go through um, this section, but we are going to tee up our last polling question. Has your company integrated diversity, equity, and inclusion into its policies, hiring practices, and corporate culture within the last year? A yes, B no, or C not sure. Please take a moment to answer this question for us now. Okay, we'll give it one more second. Here it comes. Okay, good news. So uh, the majority of respondents, 64% said that the answer is yes, 14% uh, aren't sure, and 20% have said no. So um, perhaps after listening to this, um, you know, we'll see those numbers increase. Um, so let us go through. So um, the spotlight on DEI, certainly over the last year, we've seen a lot of renewed and um, you know, focused efforts, if you will, on establishing DEI programs within the corporate um, recognition. And I am going to refer to my notes here because these three terms are related, but they are different. And I want to go through them. So uh, the first is diversity which is the presence of differences in a given setting. So the main diversity factors are gender, race, ethnicity, age, and sexual orientation, but it's also about religion, gender, identity, physical abilities, social class, political leaning, and so on. So for our purposes, a given setting refers to the workplace, which includes teams, senior management, and corporate Words. So again, the presence of dif differences in a given setting is diversity. Equity, providing equal possible outcomes for every individual. So that is the process of acknowledging that not everyone starts from the same place, that some people have barriers or privileges that others do not. So this is the key difference between equality and equity. And I, I liked this as an example. Equality is giving everyone the same ladder. 
equity is giving shorter people a longer ladder. Okay, and then inclusion. So inclusion means everyone feels a sense of belonging and it's key to a healthy workplace. Your team can be filled with members of under, underrepresented groups and you can give everyone equitable opportunities. But unless workers also feel safe, supported and valued, the company might be missing the spirit of diversity and equity. So um, I thought that that was uh, you know, a good way to, to talk about those three components of an overall DEI focus. So some things companies should be thinking about, if you will, a DEI checklist. Help ensure all employees feel welcome and are treated with respect. Make DEI a key part of the organizational culture, creating an atmosphere of belonging. Providing transparency into hiring and retention practices. And then, and importantly, for a sustained effort is to measure DEI efforts and communicate them to employees and the community. And we know at Robert Half, we've seen the um, establishment of many employee network groups across the spectrum, which have been great. Um, and then um, just to give you an idea of how these efforts are taking off, 72% of um, uh, nearly 5,000 senior managers reported that the leadership in their company had become more diverse in the last five years per our survey. So I will turn it over to Lorraine now to um, take us home. Thank you, Paula. Yeah, so Robert Half is no stranger to DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, matter of fact, back in 1948, when Robert and Maxine Half started the company, uh, we were very involved in advocating for women's rights uh, at that time. So that was definitely important to Bob Half and Maxine to make sure that women were treated fairly in the workplace. Uh, then in the 1960s, you can imagine, um, there was a lot of uh, uh, discrimination in hiring practices. Uh, Bob Half actually testified before Congress to help improve those, those situations, which was a really great thing for us to learn. I had not known that before this presentation, so that was fantastic. And today, uh, we still are advancing our commitment to DEI and to the community and to our fellow employees. It's a very big part of, of what we do here with Robert Half. And Paula and I are both very proud of the steps we've taken even since we've been here. Uh, it's, I mean, we're talking almost 10 years and the steps have been incredible over that time. So that is a little bit about Robert Half and our history there. Wow, look at this. We're getting to the end of our presentation. How sad. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to provide to you all a little uh, snippet of some of our additional resources that you have access to. As Paula alluded to earlier, our salary guide is now not available on paper. It's only available uh, through one of us or on, you know, online. Um, and you can get to that from at roberthalf.com slash salary guide. And Paul also did mention earlier that we, we have the salary guide for finance and accounting, but we also offer it for administrative and customer service. Uh, we have it for technology for advertising and marketing positions, and also for uh, uh, legal uh, positions. So if you have any need to see something, uh, rates, salaries, uh, you can go to our website and find that. Um, in addition, you can get to a calculator uh, through the salary guide. If you remember, I showed you earlier how you can look at the different percentiles for different jobs and the different variances based on locations and where people work. Uh, the salary guide calculator actually makes it a lot easier for you to see a specific job in, in that location, what that salary range would be uh, based on the percentiles. Uh, and then finally, we have the blog, which is great because on the blog, you can actually see things like hiring trends, uh, we have conference call etiquette, and uh, job search tips, obviously. So those are things we like to offer, and they're great resources for you as an employer and as a, an employee. Um, 
you know, Paula and I really enjoyed this time with you and talking about uh, the 2022 hiring and compensation trends. Uh, but there's so much. These were just highlights of our guides and, and surveys. If you would like to speak with us one-on-one, uh, -on -one, whether it's be video or in person, that would be fun. We'd be happy to do that, um, answer any questions you might have regarding uh, these trends. Uh, it's you know important for us to, to be that resource for you. So I would like you to feel free to let us know if we can do that. And uh, I guess now we'll bring it to see if Tom, if there were any questions in the Q&A or if anyone has any they'd like yeah. to put oh. in there now. <clears throat> Great. Well, well, first of all, well, thank you. Uh, I, I actually really enjoyed uh, the materials you presented. I think they were they were really spot on to a lot of what uh, I know I'm personally feeling in in the work environment. Right. Uh, we, we do have one one question that came up in the chat regarding the certified management accountant certification. And is that is that something that you're uh, that, that, that you're seeing? And, and is that something of value? That, uh, uh, that that people should be looking for is that distinguished? Yeah. Distinguish, yeah. But, uh, thanks for that question. Um, you know, I would say that typically the request for us on a certification in finance and accounting is the CPA certification. That's t that tends to be the one that we hear the most. Um, so yeah, I think you know, certifications are, are good because they keep you abreast of what's going on, you know, in terms of the, the change uh, in the field itself, you know, as it relates to manufacturing, et cetera. But um, I, you know, I, basically I, I feel, and Lorraine, you can weigh in here too, that I think we hear more of a request for the CPA certification than we do um, others. Yeah, I agree, absolutely. Great. Well, thank you for that. Hey, I, not that it came through, but as, as you were talking about the remote working um, and many of the people in this audience I know are responsible for managing teams in a remote environment. Right. Uh, maybe not for today, but maybe some follow-up um, information. It would be interesting to see uh, management trends in that area and what what we as uh, as people managers of financial uh, resources, what we what we should be looking at doing differently, and, um, and and how some of those challenges of managing, you mentioned the three days, you know, the the, the, <laughs> the fact that people want to be remote three days a week, right? Yeah. Um, you know how how do we need to change as financial leaders? Uh, in, in that environment, I think that would that would be an it'd be interesting to me, and I, I think a few of um, a, a few of the other uh, uh, you know a few of the other uh, yeah yeah well. that that's a, a great uh, follow up point for us, Tom. So we will Lorraine and I will put our heads together. I'm sure we have some uh, materials that we could also pull for you. So we'll we'll follow up with you on that. Great, thank you, thank you very much on that. Uh, so, you know, with that, why, why, why don't we wrap it up? Thank, thank you again. Thank you, our, our sponsors. Uh, you know, these, these uh, events cannot take place without uh, uh, people like Robert Half, our, uh, who is our platinum sponsor, you know, as, as, as well as BDO, Citrin Cooperman, MetLife, and Nixon Peabody, right? Uh, our, our gold sponsors. I would offer everyone to look at, look, you know, check out the website, the, uh, uh, the Long Island chapter website at, at financialexecutives.org. Um, it's a little tough to get to in, in just searching. Um, but if, if you find that website, uh, we have a couple of great upcoming events. We have our, our uh, CFO round table on November 4th. Uh, and then we also have a proposed tax, cha tax changes uh, uh, presentation on November 18th. So I would encourage you all to uh, uh, you know, register for those and, and participate. Uh, and uh, I look forward, I see a lot of familiar faces here uh, in, the, in, 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 the, um, in the attendee list, right? So thank you for that. Yeah. And uh, I hope everyone has a wonderful day and, and stay safe. So thank you again. Thank you, Tom. And thank you all. It's been our pleasure to be here today.